You are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin. Welcome to the show, guys. If you're new to the podcast, welcome to the show. If you're into anime, nerd culture, and most importantly, video games, you come to the right place because we talk about all of that shit here. This is podcast episode number 354, and we have some news this week, baby, okay? Lots of things just happened, uh, just fell out of the sky. Some good surprises, man, and I want to talk about all of them. We're going to talk about some anime a little bit, and we're also going to talk about some old games that were supposed to come out years ago and finally had some resurgence. We're also going to talk about a new trailer that I witnessed, and I'm very excited about this game now. I can't wait to dive into that, and I'm talking about Sandland, and I'll definitely get more into it for you guys. Also, Nintendo had a a direct this past week, guys. It was a partner showcase, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the titles that I saw there that I am looking forward to playing and uh, yeah, and more. Okay, and and there's also some news about Elden Ring, believe it or not. So it's a lot of stuff here, guys, and we're going to get into it. Uh, Without further ado, let's go ahead and start that. Um. I'm going to start with my anime watch list because it's pretty basic and bare. I've still been watching what I've been watching. Uh, I have to watch episode eight of solo leveling. And the reason why that is, is because right now, as I'm talking at this microphone, it is Saturday. So I typically record on Sunday. I'm going to record tonight or I'm recording tonight. And um, so I can get that out the way and I can have my Sunday free. Um, so you may hear some interruptions um, by certain individuals coming in here because of the time I'm recording. I didn't get a chance to do it until late because somebody was uh, doing some late cleaning. And I mean, real late, like three o'clock in the morning type shit. So we'll see what happens, man. I don't know if one of the little ones are going to wake up and do all that. But we'll get to that when we get to that bridge. But anyway, I'm excited. Uh, my anime watch list. I'm still watching um, the same couple like I said, I'm going to catch up on solo leveling. And then there's a uh, friend rare. I think that's how you pronounce it. I keep butchering that name um, to journey's end. And that one is really good. I'm almost at the end of that. I think I'm like episode 22 and there's only a couple more episodes left. So, yeah, uh, that's my anime watch list. It's very simple right now. I'm trying to find some new ones uh, to watch and I will definitely keep you guys posted. I have a couple on my radar. I can't think of the names right now, but I just added them. And I'm think I think I'm gonna go try to grab some of those. So yeah, I'll let you guys know next week what I got a chance to watch. But I'll definitely be finishing up this one I've been watching, and then um, I'll catch up on solo leveling, of course, and then I'll I'll find something else to jump into. And also, speaking of anime, real quick, does anybody know about uh, the app called High Dive? H I D I V E. I keep seeing that name, and the only reason why I say that is because there's a lot of anime that I'm looking to watch. You know, I Google, hey top anime 2023 to give you an example and a lot of these animes come up but they're not on crunchyroll 
And I know Crunchyroll is the main uh, app for anime. It has most of it there. And then they had that merger with Funimation and all that. But that doesn't mean that that is the only place you can go to watch anime. I think I mentioned this on an episode or two ago. And High Dive is one of those anime. It's kind of like uh, it, it's kind of like a a Burger King to McDonald's, if you will, in the anime community. It's a smaller uh, app, but it's supposedly got a lot of decent uh, decent anime there. So I don't know. I've seen a couple of these anime, and it tells you where to watch them at, and Crunchyroll's not there. I just keep seeing High Dive, so I'm like, okay, let's, we may check it out. I looked it up a little bit, and I think it's like, I want to say $5 a month, so it's not that bad, and you don't have ads and all that, and they have a lot of dubs, I think around 250 dubs, if you're into the dubs, or if you don't mind uh, that, but yeah, you know, just a little something I just looked up real quick, I'm going to look more into it in the next week or so, and then I may, you know, I may add that to uh, the uh, library as well, like I said, I'm an anime guy, and $5 a month isn't that bad, and it depends on, you know, everything else, I'll, I'll dig deeper and find out, and I'll talk about it next week. If you guys know more, hey, please don't hesitate. Hit me up on my social media platforms at Studio MacGyver on Instagram. You can also do it on Twitter. I call it Twitter. I don't call it X, but you can also do at Studio MacGyver there as well. So yeah, just let me know, guys. Anything you want to recommend, anything you might want you know, me to check out, please hit me there. Anyway, let's get back to the games now. And this is a title that I've talked about before on many occasions. It hasn't been a while. Well, it has been a while um, because this game is strange, man. It's just a strange game uh, as far as the history and, and, and when it was announced and to where it is now. And I'm talking about Little Devil Inside. Now, a lot of my longtime listeners know that I've uh, talked about this game thoroughly and how I was so looking forward to, to playing this game. Still am to this day. And apparently we got some finally we got some news on this finally uh, the devs have come out of the fucking hole they were under they were in and they finally decided to grace us with their fucking presence okay and they're telling us that they are now working with this game with the unreal engine 5 so what most likely happened is they had to cut their losses and when you start from scratch like that and you learn a new engine, that's going to take time. And also, apparently, they had a team which they expanded and then they kind of cut back a little bit. I guess they cut it to, I guess, their core members and they said they wanted to get very intimate and they wanted to get back to being intimate with the game and just focusing on all the little tiny things that, you know, devs get excited about when they make uh, the games, especially when you talk about indie titles. Right. So that's a gift and a curse depending on what angle you're looking at that from, because from a consumer standpoint, you're like, yo, uh, I want to play the game. We've waited so many years and we still uh, don't have the game. And then on the other side of the lens, you're looking at it as a developer and you're like, well, we want to make this right. We, we want to do it one time and we don't want to riddle you with sh a shit ton of fucking updates every other fucking week. OK, so it depends on how you want to look at it. Of course. I'm looking at it for a gamer's perspective most mostly and I want to play this game. I think this game was announced back in 2017 on a Kickstarter, if I'm not mistaken. OK, and we're still sitting here waiting. It was announced back then to come out in 2022. That was the initial release date and that was going to be, be for PS4 and PS5. I think it's safe to say that the PS4 version is going to be axed only because they're using Unreal Engine 5 now. And I just don't see anything happening with that. Call it what you will. I call it PS4 version being axed. And uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, Little Devil Inside is here. It's going down. There's a new trailer out. It's about, mm, I want to say, two and a half, three minutes long, something like that. What they did show us, what I am appreciating is they gave us a map view, like an overview of a map. And it looks like they've redone that. OK, uh, my son was going to the bathroom. I'm sorry to interrupt that. He, he was going to the bathroom and he came in here and I had to kind of shun him uh, as I'm recording. That it's like I said, I, I knew sooner or later something was going to happen, but it is what it is. He's been really trying to get me to play, I think, Dead Island. I think it's called Dead Island 2 um, on Xbox. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, try to put some time aside for me and him to play that tomorrow. 
uh, because like I said, that's another reason why I'm trying to do this podcast now, because with that done tonight, I can have more time to play with him on that. And I don't have to worry about, you know, getting the podcast and stuff together on Sunday, which I usually do. And it, it kind of gets hectic sometimes for me. But uh, anyway, check out Little Devil Inside, the new trailer. Um, it looks cool. It looks like they're on a nice path. The thing that <laughs> the thing that kind of piqued my interest the most out of all of this, though, is the fact that there is no release date. All right. There's still no release date, not even a release date window. So, I mean, if I'm being a realist here, I'm probably not going to be looking for this game until 2025 sometime. And, and that's being that's being generous. OK. Uh, and they did apologize. They left some statements and they were saying that they apologize for being dead silent because that's what happened with these guys. They just fell off the fucking map. They didn't have anything on their Twitter, anything on their social media handles. You couldn't find shit. Right. And we were wondering what the fuck was going on. So they basically said, look, we've partnered with Sony. They're helping us here uh, and we're going to get this done. But we don't know when it's still up in the air. We just want to let everybody know that the game is not dead and we're still working on it. So take it how you want to take it. And I'm not going to hold my breath. You know, like I said, these guys are going to take their time. And if that's what they're doing, you probably should just sit back and um, I guess relax until 2025. That, that's just how I'm going to do it. You know, do what you will. But I just thought I have to share that. Wanted to share that information with you guys. Anybody else was looking forward to that or maybe you forgot about this game. You know, but now, you know, but yeah, Little Devil Inside is still alive and kicking for the time being. Next, let's talk a little bit about this Final Fantasy Rebirth. OK, part two, um, whatever, you, however you want to pronounce it, what do you think it's called? But yeah, um, the reviews are already out. That's kind of a thing. And they're pretty good. They, they, they've got a 92 on average is the score. And that's pretty damn good. I think Final Fantasy 16 got 87 if I'm not mistaken. And look, I don't care what anybody says. I fucking loved Final Fantasy 16, man. Probably one of my favorite. It probably is going down as one of my favorite Final Fantasy games up to this point. It is. It, the story is fabulous. And like I said, there's one DLC out for it now, but there's another one coming. I want to say summer time ish. And that's when I'm going to go do my new game plus on that, because like I said, if you've played the game and beat the game, you know what I'm you know, where I'm kind of leaning towards this game game has a little bit more this story has more to offer and i'll just leave it at that i'm not going to say anything else but looking forward to that okay i call it the uh video game ova if you uh can make a distinction with the anime uh aspect of that but yeah and i'll leave it at that. i'll leave it there but anyway final fantasy 16 is doing well right now among critics of course the game drops on the 29th for everybody else and uh the demo's out they actually put a second part of the demo out which is going to allow you to play as the whole crew and i haven't even got a chance to play that portion i just played the first part and like i said i thought it was excellent uh like i said i'm not the biggest final fantasy 7 guy like i know there's a lot of it's saying that's the best final fantasy but it's not my favorite final fantasy game guys i'm just keeping it real and now that final fantasy 16 is out i really love that one too so you know i like 10 if i had to pick one before uh, Final Fantasy 16 or 7, that that would be mine. Uh, but like I said, am I going to play this? Yeah. But am I going to play day one? No. Uh, there's a lot of reasons behind that. And one of them is Dragon's Dogma, which is coming out a few weeks after that. So, you know, I don't want to get invested in that. And I still have to play, which I am going to start probably Monday because I'm probably going to be playing with my son on Sunday. But I am finally going to start Persona 3 Reload. I'm finally going to you know, putting some hours in that and get busy on that. So that's been waiting long enough. I've got all of the um, I beat all of the Hell Divers 2 out of me right now because I'm just these guys. I'm kind of fed up with Hell Divers 2 right now, guys. I, they just got in over their head and there's just some things that need to be worked out. It's one of those games that, you know, you can play solo. I don't like playing with solo, playing it solo. I don't like playing with randoms because they do dumb shit. OK. You're sitting there trying to extract and next thing you know, they fucking bomb your fucking area and kill you. And then some of these fuckers don't even want to bring you back. All right. I got a video out. I put out a while back and it was called like, hey, man, you know, bring me in. Basically, these guys fucking killed me or I died. And then 
they didn't want to bring me in so I could help out. And then they ended up getting all killed. And then I ended up being the only one making the fucking extraction. And they deserved what they got. They deserved not making the extraction. And yeah. Anyway, check the video out on on the YouTube channel if you haven't seen it. But yeah, so I'm going to wait to play with friends on that. And the problem that with that is when I want to play with friends, that's when everybody's trying to play. And that's when we're hit with all of these uh, these these glitches. What do you want to call them? Or just waiting to get in. OK, just waiting to get playtime. So, uh, you know, maybe a month from now. That'll be all ironed out. The servers won't be as clogged up and there'll be other games out. And that's probably what's going to happen. And then when I want to get a casual game in there, here or there, I can do that with friends. Right now, Hell Divers 2 is a very fun game with friends. Like if you have a, a group of friends and want to play this man and you can communicate with them, it is an excellent experience. If not, it's going to be some ups and there's going to be some downs. That's just my humble opinion, guys. They are working with something here. And I do believe that with a little time. They can make this into something pretty, pretty big, in my opinion. But anyway, I don't know how I got to that. I was on Final Fantasy, but yeah, Final Fantasy 7 is still a good game. I know a lot of people are going to buy the fuck out of it. I know there's huge fans. There's a lot of fans out here. Uh, and, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it to the fullest. And when I get to it, I'll get to it. I'm just not going to sit here and lie and say I'm going to be playing it anytime soon. I know I'm not. And it won't be the second game. I play with the third either because there's other games. And I'm going to get to some of those, too, that are coming out. There's still Rise of the Ronin, which I do plan on playing as well. So, you know, these games, in my opinion, are coming before Final Fantasy VII, if I'm just being honest. And then there's more because after March, there's April. And April has a couple bangers. God damn it. It's just so many great things. But anyway, let's get to one of those games that are coming out in fucking April that that really I wasn't planning on playing in April, but now I wasn't planning on buying it. But now I have to now I have to buy this game because I saw a fucking nine minute trailer. OK, a breakdown of what this game is going to be about. And I've instantly fell in love with it. And I'm talking about a game that goes by the name of Sandland. OK, now this, if you're not familiar with it, is based on a manga and anime from Akira Toriyama. OK, from fame, Dragon Ball, uh, that one of my favorite all time anime of all time, Dragon Ball and my favorite artist, one of my favorite artists, Akira Toriyama. I love his art style. All my OG listeners know this. And I just love Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is the whole reason why I'm an anime fan, period. And I didn't I knew nothing about this, uh, this, this title. I knew nothing about Sandland. OK, I just knew once I saw the art, I knew it was Toriyama. You know, just same thing in, like, as when you look at certain things like Dragon Quest and you, you instantly know Toe Ball. OK, number one, Akira Toriyama, like his art is just you just know it. Right. It's just so recognizable. But anyway, this this uh, game makes me really want to learn about the manga and, and all that. But I'm like, you know what? I don't want to read the manga or watch the anime until I play the game now. I'd rather find out and discover it playing this game. This game here looks so awesome, guys. It's an it's an action RPG, okay, and it has so many different dynamics to it. I highly encourage anybody to check out this trailer. It's about eight and a half to nine minutes long, and I think anybody who is a fan of Akira Toriyama or Dragon Ball should definitely check it out. And if you're just a fan of an RPG, RPGs period, like action RPGs, open world action RPGs, you should check this out because that's what this game is. It's an open world RPG, open world action RPG, okay. It is fucking beautiful. It's basically Toriyama's life blood all through this thing. OK, uh, you play this character. I don't even know his name. His name is very weird. OK, I'd get it wrong. I'm going to butcher his name, but he's like this demon prince. OK, demon prince thing. He wears a cape. He's pre he's pinkish and they live in a land in this world, which is pretty much all desert. All right. And the number one commodity in this world, in this universe is water. So water is basically used to replenish you. It's basically your lifeblood in this game. OK, it's, it's like a potion per se. So think of it like that. And you develop and meet people throughout your journey and become part of your team. OK, I think two or three people uh, you meet and they become part of your core team and each of them brings something different to the table. All right. Most of them are scientists and um Things of that nature. I think one is a sheriff, a uh, human sheriff. And uh, the cool thing about that is they all bring something to the table, like I said before. And you meet this character who kind of reminds me of like Bulma. OK, she's a scientist. She's got these dreadlocks or whatever, these blonde locks. And she's really smart and she makes a lot of dope shit. And 
you see a lot of references to Dragon Ball in here, too, as far as like the capsule corporation is concerned. You have like so many different vehicles in this. What makes this game so dope is, yes, you can fight with your uh, hand to hand combat. You know, he has a lot of moves and he has a lot of abilities that you eventually learn and you can do uh, in this game. And you can fight the, uh, you know, enemies here uh, that way. But you can also use vehicles. OK, and devices uh, you can fucking use vehicles for tra transportation. You have bikes, you have like tanks and you can customize all of these things, fully customize all of them. You can add things to them. You can change the colors, all of these things you can do. You have certain devices, uh, machines that just help you progress around the world. OK, there's some mountaintops that you can't get through on foot. You have to jump. So there's actual vehicles that you can have and have made and will allow you to jump over long distances, which you would not be able to do otherwise. Right. And you, you have this universal tank that you run around in and it comes with your basic guns and, and stuff like that. But as you progress, you get parts and you do certain things you can add these things and have your team uh, build these things for you and add them to your vehicle and make it that much more potent, that much more of an adversary adversary. It just the sky's are the fucking limit with this game, guys. And then your your team actually uh, actually has a skill tree as well that you must update and upgrade. And as you upgrade that, they uh, unlock different things that they can make for you and so on and so forth. So it, it, it looks really dope, man. And like I said, it's open world. It's really huge. Um, there's races you can partake in. There's even bounty hunts that you can partake in as well. And there's like these battle arenas as well that you can fight and test your skills, your hand to hand combat skills and things of that nature. There's so many things with this game there. There's even a, uh, a community or a village that you start off as. Right. And that's where your main hub is at. You start there and it's, it's pretty much a landfill starting out. It's, it's it looks like a fucking hot garbage, if I'm being honest. And then as you. As you, you know, do missions and earn money and earn your reputation gets a little better. People start to uh, travel to this uh, this piece of shit area that you have, you know, and then they start to uh, migrate there. And next thing you know, a community is starting to be made, starting to be built. And the more money and resources you put into this uh, village where your base is uh, located, it transforms over time into something pretty and more beautiful as time progresses. And it's just a beautiful type of transition. Uh, and it's just another form of of a game within a game, if that makes sense. So you're always working on something. You're always bettering uh, a situation for yourself. And whether it be your village where your main hub is or whether it be a vehicle that you uh, want or whether it be the people around you who help you uh, on your journey. You know what I mean? It's all of these things and it's all beautiful. And you have five, I think it's five slots. Uh, and eventually, as you progress through the game, you unlock more vehicles and you lock blueprints to make these vehicles and stuff. And you can carry up to five at one point. So basically, it's like throwing a capsule at the ground. Boom. And you have a new vehicle. OK, you may run up on an area where you have to jump. So you say, OK, well, I have my machine on me. Throw that capsule out. Boom. I have it. Or you may be about to embark on a super boss fight. Right. And you have a vehicle for that. Boom. Pull that vehicle out and so on and so forth. So there's, some, there's a lot of dope shit. There's even like robots who have arms and legs where you can actually sit in, kind of like sit inside and kind of have fight for you and do things for you and pick up things and move heavy objects. It's crazy, man. You have to check it out. It, it, it breaks everything down. All the th core things that are going to be available in this game. And I'm so ecstatic about it because I didn't see it coming. I saw previews, little short glimpses of what this was, and I didn't really pay too much mind to it. Yes, I knew it was Toriyama and I was going to give it a gander. But upon looking at this, it basically tells you like what this game is about. And it's a open world action RPG uh, from the mind of Toriyama. And I said, yo, I cannot turn this shit down. So it's coming out for most platforms, I think, if I'm being honest, except for the Switch. Um, but yeah, it, it's even got a collector's edition, which I am, I think I'm going to pull the trigger on. It's like 120 bucks. Yeah, I noticed a lot. But uh, man, I'm really intrigued by this. I'm really intrigued by this anime, this manga too. And they're actually going to release an anime right around the same time that this is coming out. I think it's going to be on Hulu for sure. And I want to say Netflix. I know Hulu for sure, though. So definitely get ready for that. Um, and it was a real short you know, manga it didn't have a lot of chapters to it, um, 
But, you know, those are some of the best ones, the ones that are short and sweet. You, you write a story, you, you, you get it in there and you, and you knock it out the park. So this, I think, is going to create a lot of new fans for this manga, for this anime. And it being Kira Toriyama, you know, Dragon Ball fans, a lot of us by default will probably end up switching over there and kind of sniffing around over there. We may find something that we really enjoy. I know for a fact that the game and the world that I've seen so far makes me feel that way. So if anything else does anything for me, that's just going to be a cherry on top. So I had to bring these guys to your attention and you need to check it out. The game is called Sand Land. OK, and you need to check out this trailer. Just Google it, look it up and the trailer should come up. Just look for a video that's about nine minutes long and click it. And it's Bandai Namco as well. So you already know they're known for fucking um, dropping those gems on us all the time. And yeah, man, just check them out. Sand Land. All right. Now. Got that out of the way, gushing over that fucking game. Let's get into something else and let's talk about Elden Ring. Yeah, Elden Ring, the DLC. This is something that a lot of people have been clamoring for and it's finally here. We finally got a release date. We finally got info. And what's so crazy about this whole thing is the fact that these guys were beating, marching to the beat of their own drum. They said, we don't give a fuck about the, the major events. We're not going to do this um, on, you know, any special occasion. We're not going to, we're just going to drop it. We're going to tell you guys, Hey, tune in and we're going to give you guys some information. Okay. And that's what they did. Okay. Like most people thought it was going to be at a Sony event or something like that. And it just never happened. Uh, but now we do have the release date and it is this summer. Okay. June 21st, June 21st, 2024. You're going to get the fucking DLC. Now, a lot of people are salty because it's coming out, you know, months later. Most people kind of pinned it for, hey, it's going to be two year anniversary in February. Let's get it there. Or at least at least get it a month after. But no, they're waiting and they're going to give it to us at that time. So that's why some people are salty. Uh, but hey, it, it's going to be worth the wait. A lot of people said that, hey, they thought it was going to come out much later. And they're just glad that it's coming out this year. OK, and. You know, these guys have been working hard on this DLC and the rumor has it is that it was supposed to be two separate DLCs. All right. They were going to split them, but they said, no, we're going to trash that. We want to put it all at one thing and just give it to everybody at one time. And they said it's pretty sizable as well. So the map is going to be pretty big and the story is going to be very interesting. I don't know too much about the story. That lore is crazy deep and I'll let you guys deal with that when you get to it. All right. I know I have a whole lot of stuff to do in Elden Ring still, uh, still some bosses out there. I know I, so I'm gonna have some friends come and we're going to try to clean that up uh, when it gets closer to that DLC. And then when the DLC drops, we're going to go at it again. So get ready for all the Elden Ring players out there. This summer is going to be crazy. This summer is going to be crazy for just games period. There's a lot of shit going on, man. And that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the dilemma, man, as an avid gamer, you know, somebody like me who plays games and just plays a lot of them. It's, it's just you got to make time, you know, and, and some games are the surprise games that come out and they just grab you. And, oh, you end up spending, you know, 100 hours over here on this one you didn't see coming. And it, it, it's a lot of that you have those surprise games, you know, that catch you off guard. So that's the fun stuff, too, about being a gamer as well. So don't 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 give me the line. You know, uh, right now, Do Dragon's Dogma 2 is just looking so delicious right now. The more and more I see, I've been seeing more videos on it. And, oh, man, it's just looking so good, man. Um Cannot wait. And I think, you know, with all the classes that are announced now, you know, if you Google Dragon's Dogma 2, the main thing is, hey, what am I going to start with? What do I want to start out with? What class do I? Because, you know, you only get a handful of classes to start with. And I already know the class I'm going personally, and it's going to be Thief. The Thief is the most fun to play. The Assassin was really one of the funnest ones to play in the first Dragon's Dogma game. And it seems like what they did was they took all the dope shit from the assassin build, okay, or class, and they put it on the thief class. So highly anticipating that. And I definitely eventually want to kind of segue into a a magic archer. Okay. And I was playing that and I learned a lot about that in the first Dragon's Dogma and never played it, played that um thing. And the last my last playthrough on Dragon's Dogma was I was leading into that magic archer kind of build. Um and yeah, so that that's going to be the, the, the way I'm going to go. Uh, as far as my pawn is concerned, I am not sure yet. I'm torn between like a warrior and or a sorcerer, 
one of those two. So, yeah, it's going to be one of those two and maybe mage because, you know, the healing factors and all that. So we'll see, man. It's going to be an excellent experience. I'm so hyped for this game. It's going down. But yeah, there's so many things coming out. Then you have Rise of the Ronin, same day. And I'm going to have to find find a place for that as well. Definitely. Uh, it's just a lot of dope shit. And in April, like I said, this this uh, Sandland game comes out April 25th, and which is crazy. So it's another dilemma in fucking April because in March you have Dragon's Dogma and then you have Rise of the Ronin dropping on the same fucking day and then in April you have Sandland which I'm so ecstatic about but there's another game that I that that that's a little bit that if I had to choose out of that and this I have to I have to go with this one first and this is uh this one is Stellar Blade so Stellar Blade comes out I think one day after or one day before I want to say one day after Sandland comes out. One of them comes out on the 25th and the other one comes out on the 26th, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to Stellar Blade as well. Like, yo, I got some dilemmas out here. That is what I'm saying. So March and April are going to be crazy fucking months. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> and they're a month apart. So it's about a month apart. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy, guys. Not going to be able to play them all. You know, I'll be able to play two. You know, one in April and one in March, and then I have to fit the other two in between that time. And then there, then you have uh, May, which I don't I don't know what's coming out in May yet, but I'll definitely do a refresher course and let you guys know. But yeah, it's pretty much something every month. And if there's a month that something doesn't come out, then that's where I would plug, you know, one of these other games in there. So for me personally, about three weeks is like the magic spot. For like these open world type of games, these these ones where you need, to, you know, when you need to put in 50 to 100 hours in, you know, usually for me, uh, about three weeks, maybe four tops right around that month's time frame is what I usually spend on one title. Right. And before I say, OK, I'm done, I've, I've done pretty much what I want to do with it. Everything else will be just kind of I'm cleaning my plate and I'll get to that later whenever. You know what I mean? So, yeah. There's 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 that time frame for me. But yeah, so many things going on. Elden Ring, though, is going to be crazy. I know it is. And uh, there's supposed to be like two, no, 10 new bosses. And there's supposed to be like nine, I want to say nine to or 11. I can't remember which number that is. Different kind of new weapons and stuff. They showed a couple of them. They showed some dope new armor. They also showed, showed like this art form, like this, this Kung Fu or Ninja type kick uh, multiple kicks that you could do and I also saw this fucking it looks like a short bow but it's kind of like machine gun it had so many loaded he was shooting a gang of them like a machine gun like it was crazy so yeah they're showing some things here and then let's, let's not even get into all the spells and and all the other things that are probably hidden within this dlc man you know they're they've got so many things hidden one thing about from software they love hiding shit and uh it, it will probably take months before everything is discovered and all of it and, and probably even longer there's people still discovering shit in elden ring so it's just crazy how that is and that's a good thing it's always cool it just shows that they do a great job with their games so yeah man elden ring is on the way it's back you don't have to worry about it anymore it's coming very soon so with that out of the way the last thing i want to talk about real quick is this nintendo direct okay this partner showcase and they had some games here i want to say they had maybe a dozen games maybe I think maybe 10 to 12 games. I didn't cover them all. Uh, I did talk. I did, you know, want to mention a few of them that caught my attention. Okay. That I want to, you know, show you guys or, or at least discuss briefly. And we start out with Grounded. Now, I don't know if you guys knew about Grounded, but Grounded was a game on Xbox and it was in beta for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. Like, a very long time, but it was fun. I mean, you could play with other people. You play like these shrunken kids in the world of like you, you were in this grass, this forest trees and you, your biggest enemies were like ants and fucking bugs and shit like that. And you kind of had to manage your resources. And um, it was just it was it, had, it was a pretty fun game. You know, I could definitely, you know, sink some hours into that and see other people kind of doing that. But yeah, this game is actually coming out for the switch. I think that's pretty dope. The switch. <sighs> It is a great machine for a lot of these games, man. Like I said, it, it really is. There's a lot of dope games that I didn't even think would even be on the Switch. But that Tegra X1 chip is so old and dated, man. They're still making shit happen with it. They're still finding ways to stretch it out and make shit happen 
Okay. And when we're talking about that, apparently the switch may not be coming out in 2024. Just to give you guys a brief little brush of that brush right there. Yeah, man. Uh, there was a, there was a investor call not too long ago and they were talking about how it doesn't look like it's in the cards for this year. It could be pushed back. Okay. Nintendo is going, not going to rush a thing. And it kind of, I shouldn't be surprised. I really shouldn't be surprised. None of us should be if we hear that Nintendo is not dropping the Switch to uh, this year because they just do shit their own fucking way. They just do. <laughs> but then they could be telling us that to keep us snowed and then they hit us with a whammy, another Nintendo Direct, and now they, they pull us out, right? So who fucking knows, guys? Um, I hope we at least, if anything, get the announcement that it is coming and we get maybe uh, a quick look at what it's going to look like and maybe the specs and stuff like that coming from Nintendo's mouth as opposed to just following the breadcrumbs, um, you know, listening to these investor calls and getting the information that way. You know what I mean? Because Nintendo's not going to admit anything until they admit it. That's just how they roll. But anyway, get back onto the partner showcase. Uh, talked a little bit about Grounded. Let's move on. Now, here's another one. Epic Mickey. Epic Mickey is doing a, I guess they're doing a definitive edition. I guess you can call it that because it's called Epic Mickey Rebrushed. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Uh, I know there was a lot of those fans of that game when it came out. I remember people were going crazy when it, when that first one came out. And this one looks pretty dope. Um, I see a lot of people playing this. I see a lot of people messing with this one for sure. But this is another game that, you know, they announced here. And another game on this list is called Endless. I think it's called Endless Ocean Luminous. I think that's what it is. This was a this was an action RPG, I think, JRPG. Uh, looks pretty dope. I don't know too much about it. They, sh you know, they barely showed anything on a lot of these games. Uh, they just kind of, you know, breezed over them real quick. Another one is called Ender Magnolia. Okay. And I think that's a sequel to, I want to say Ender Lilies, but don't let me get to lying, guys. I think that's what it is. I get some of these mixed up. These, the, the Endless Ocean, I got that kind of mixed up with uh, Ender Magnolia. So, I apologize in advance. But anyway, I think that is what that game is. But I digress. Another game on this list is Shimagami Tensei Vengeance. Now, this, uh, if you guys don't know, I think I think this is the fifth game, but just a definitive version of it, like all the DLCs and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's what this is. Don't let me get the line. OK. But it looks it looks good. It, it definitely looks good. The one before that was fucking breathtaking. I didn't play it personally yet. It's definitely one I want to add to the library. But that one looks fucking awesome. I heard it was pretty hard, too. So this is the last game on the list I'm about to announce. But this one here, I don't know. It just kind of stuck with me. And it was this one goes by the name of Another Crab's Treasure. This is an action RPG game about a crab who loses his shell and is on a mission to get his shell back. But to do so, he has to do all these things and go through all these trials and tribulations to do so. So to substitute his own personal shell, he has to find other things in the world and use them as a temporary shell. Now, the cool thing about this game is that there are dozens of different things he can use from old cans to uh, bowls and things of that nature. And each one of those different things he finds, they have different properties to them. OK, they do different things. Uh, so basically, he has different weapons, if you will, at his disposal. Uh, so it's going to be fun figuring out what all these do and how to put certain ones together to beat bosses and do certain things. But I thought that was really cool. And it's coming to the Nintendo Switch. And I want to say it's coming out in April, like April 25th, if I'm not mistaken. But that was the bright light of that direct for me. But to make it even better, this game is actually coming to Game Pass. So and they do that a lot. Nintendo has a lot of games that are coming out on the Switch and that are going to Game Pass as well. That's the cool thing about Game Pass, man. There was a couple other games like this that happened that happened to uh, and they were out. And these were games I said, oh, man, when I watch a direct, I say, I want to get this and add this to the Switch. I want to add this to the library. And then I find out, yo, this is coming out for Game Pass or I'm just going through Game Pass and I see it pop up I'm like, yo, I didn't know this was oh, OK, shit. 
And, you know, of course, no wonder they mentioned that it's on Game Pass on a Nintendo Direct. OK, they want you to buy it on their platform, of course. Uh, but if you're a gamer like me, you're going to and you play everything. It's like psh, these are the advantages of having multiple consoles and subscriptions and stuff like that. You know, there's always something to play. There's always something to play. We're spoiled, man. I, let's just be honest with each other. It, I know I am. I'm spoiled as fuck, right? There's games that I have that I could easily just play. I'll never run out of games to play. There, there's there's games I still have in the package I have not unwrapped, okay? I still have not cracked open Mario RPG. That's still in shrink wrap. Like, there, there's games that I just, I guess you can call us a game, call me a game hoarder or whatever. I think all of us have a little bit of that in us, especially the ones who, who really play games, like who really enjoy playing them. You know, it's like we're OK. This is on sale. I got to buy this. I'm not going to play it now, but eventually, you know, I'll have it. And if, ever, if something happens and I and I, I I don't know, we don't have subscriptions for whatever reason, for an extended period of time, whatever. I'll just never run out of shit to play. I'll never have a moment where I say, well, I'm traveling. I'm going here. I'm going there. And I don't have no games. I'm missing. I'm, I need to play something. I'll, I'll have something for every occasion. I do. I have a retro pocket three plus. I have three yeses. I have PSPs and I have Nintendo switches, all these things. You know what I'm saying? So never, 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 never go without games. And that's part of just being a gamer, I guess, hoarding games sometimes. So it's a beautiful thing. It is what it is. That game, another crab's treasure is coming to Game Pass. So I will be checking that one out on Game Pass for sure. And I guess letting you guys know how that goes eventually when I can get to it, because April, like I said, there's a lot of things coming out in April. So, oh, man, it's hard to compartmentalize some of this stuff. You know, I, I, I think that's something that I would like to learn how to do more. Uh, some people can do that. Some people can play a major open world RPG game like a Dragon's Dogma 2 and they can play Rise of the Ronin side by side. Like they can play one on Monday and one on Tuesday and, and so on and so forth. Or they can play one for a couple hours and they can play another one for a couple hours. Uh, I would love to be able to do that. You know what I mean? But I just can't. My mind doesn't work that way when it comes to those type of titles. I have to play one first and I have to get in there and then move on to the next one. If that makes sense, that's just how I roll, man. So now with if we're talking fighting games, that's different. You know, something where you can just pick it up and play for a minute and then back out. I can do that. I can play like a Street Fighter or a Tekken 8 or something like that for a little bit and then put that down and go to one of these other long uh, winded type of games because they're kind of they're really different in, in essence. You'd have to understand and play them to understand what I'm what I mean by that. But I can do that there. But if it's two of those type of the game of the same kind of genre like that, I couldn't do it. Two fighting games. Yeah, I could probably do that, too. Um, it's just it would fuck with you a little bit because, you know, a Tekken 8 is going to be different from a Street Fighter or, you know, a King of Fighters or whatever, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, it's just, you know, you get those wires crossed. So you kind of want to get in the one and, and get that down. Even a Mortal Kombat. Yeah, they all play different. They all fucking play different. So I'm just excited right now. I'm just very happy to be a gamer, guys. I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun out here. And uh, there's just it's a lot of stuff, beautiful things coming up. So many great things. And these demos, I think we're going to get a Dragon's Dogma demo, too. There's whispers in the streets saying we're going to get a Dragon's Dogma 2 demo. And I hope we fucking do. That would be awesome. I mean, because there's a demo already made out that they're showing for people. Now, if you go look, uh, there's people who've actually gotten their hands on the game and uh, you can see a lot of the stats and you can kind of people are already kind of data mining this stuff and putting shit together and making videos for it. And I love all that. And I think we're going to get a demo. So hopefully we get one at the end of this month, maybe early next month. So we can kind of get a taste of what this game is going to entail. I would love to get one from Rise of the Ronin as well. But, you know, all our dreams can't be answered, but it's all good. But yeah, with that being said, guys, that's going to do it for the show. I want to thank everybody for coming out, downloading, streaming, listening to the show, guys. Definitely check me out on my social media platforms. Check me out on Twitter at Studio MacGyver. Also check me out on Instagram at Studio MacGyver as well. You can also hit me up on TikTok at Random Gameplay Pimpin. And please, for God's sakes, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Random Gameplay Pimpin. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Uh, getting tired. Got some things I still need to do, but I'll be back next week. We do this every Monday. Same bad time, same bad channel. If you're new to the show, Welcome to the family once again, and I hope to see you guys next Monday. So 
I'm out, guys. I love you so much. This is your boy, Studio MacGyver, and you have been listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. See you next time.